Hi, I'm Lisa Nichols, and today I want to show you how to take an NMR of a sample using a 60 megahertz benchtop spectrometer. I'll first put a clean NMR tube into an Erlenmeyer for support, and next I'm going to add my deuterated solvent. I'm going to use deuterochloroform, or CDCl3. It's a really common solvent for NMR, but this is a pretty hazardous material. It's a suspect carcinogen, and so when working with this, you do want to wear gloves and work in the fume hood. Uh, deuterochloroform also has a tendency to drip out of the pipette. So if you pull up some liquid and then notice that it's dripping out of the pipette all on its own, even without pushing on the bulb, um, one way to fix this is to withdraw and expunge the solvent a few times. And by doing that, you'll saturate the head space in the pipette with vapors and it won't drip anymore. Then you can add that to your NMR tube and you want to fill it up to about one and a half inches high. If you have extra, you can actually put that back into the reagent jar, especially if you know that that pipette is clean. You won't necessarily cross-contaminate it. Um, and deuterochloroform is actually quite expensive, so we don't want to waste it. So here is our one and a half inches of solvent. Next, what you'll do is add your sample, and I'm going to run an NMR on vinyl propionate. Um, since I'm doing this on a 60 megahertz instrument, I'll need quite a few, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of sample. I'm going to need uh, six drops of sample. It doesn't seem to be dripping, so now I'll add that to the tube. And uh, to tr you know, try to prevent contamination on the pipette tip, I'm going to try to not touch the tube um, with the pipette, but I'll be adding six drops to the NMR tube. And then you can take a cap and sort of with a twisting motion, you can secure the cap to the, to the tube. And then because I dripped in the sample um, after the solvent, it's probably just sitting there near the top and it's on the sides. So invert the tube one or two times and then that will rinse the solvent through it and make a solution. At the instrument, you then put your sample inside of the warming chamber and leave it there for two minutes. You want to make sure that the sample is the same temperature as the instrument so that you get the best resolution. After two minutes, you're going to remove the reference sample, which is always kept in the instrument. Remove it while keeping it vertical so that you don't snap it in half, and then you can just set that aside. You can then take your warmed sample and place that inside the instrument, again keeping it vertical, and just push it in until it, it won't want to go any further. And then it's pretty easy. On the touch screen, you're just going to push that big go. And I'm going to make this a little faster for you because it takes a little while. It probably takes about 30 seconds, maybe a minute for a normal run. But you're going to have the spectrum show up and it'll keep on getting better and better as more scans happen. And you'll know when it's done when that cancel button goes away. The spectrum is now done. All you need to do is save it. So you're going to push the JDX button, then the network button, and then you can just uh, remove the auto-generated name, type in your own name, and you push enter, and then that is um, sending the file um, to the computers. When you're done, you're just going to push done, and then um, make sure to take out your sample and replace it with the reference sample again.